Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm Svetlana Pakasova. I'm pre-sale engineer in Streamlabs company. And also there are two of my colleagues who will help me. Maxim Viremeev, the play product owner and project manager, and Viktor Bershansky, my technical assistant. Uh -huh. During all the time of my presentation, you may write your questions into the chat window. And uh, in the last part of our meeting, me and Maxim and Viktor will answer to your questions. Uh, today, I am pleased to welcome you at the first presentation of the new replay features. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning, I would like to talk briefly about our company. Uh, Streamlabs is uh, an international company which provides professional solutions for terrestrial, satellite and cable television stations for uh, IPTV and for OTT operators. Uh, Streamlabs uh, places in 160 countries since uh, 1991. Uh, the main goal of uh, our company is um, development and production of uh, professional solutions for television and telecommunication companies. Uh, Streamlabs company uh, works in several directions. First uh, is hardware and software solutions for monitoring of broadcast quality and uh, for um, control recording of uh, TV and radio signals. Second direction is uh, multi-channel SDI boards uh, for input and output uh, television, audio and video signals. Um, I mean SDI boards. Um, and the third direction is the equipment for uh, closed circuit television systems or CCTV. Uh, the most important um, direction for us today is uh, hardware and software solutions for the organization uh, of the broadcast channel and for uh, advertising insertions and uh, graphic design for each TV channel. Uh, this is uh, our broadcast automated system we play and uh, this is what we will talk about. As for uh, the automation of television systems, it is important to say that uh, the company offers solutions either for uh, central or regional television companies and uh, also for satellite and cable television uh, and uh, for streaming over the network, I mean web streaming and OTT. Mm. Streamlabs is, uh, is an international company. Our offices are located in Russia, main uh, office in Moscow. Um, in Latvia and uh, in the United States. Uh, Streamlabs equipment uh, is used on more than three and a half uh, thousand televisions uh, in almost of 160 countries. Um, so uh, I guess that's enough about our company and uh, let's move on to the product. Mm -hmm. Here we can see the scheme of the play broadcast automation. Um, Today, uh, we are going to talk about broadcast automation, as you can see. And uh, for the beginning, I would like to talk uh, about the play automation system in general terms. Uh, what our replay is and uh, what it is used for. Replay is a multi-channel broadcast server with uh, the capabilities of um, a broadcasting center. So uh, we are talking here uh, not about, uh, about only making of a television signal, but also about a multi-channel broadcast automation system about uh, building channel graphics uh, for each broadcast channel, about subtitling, um, I mean multi-language uh, DVB and uh, ATC subtitles, about normalization of um, the level of output volume, or in other words, uh, about automatic loudness control correction, sorry, uh, and uh, about interactions uh, with regional ID insertion marks. Uh, one of uh, the most important feature uh, of the Play software is uh, the flexibility of its configuration. And uh, so it makes uh, the Play the ultimate tool for each possible task. Um, let me give you some more details. Hmm. Yeah, here we can see it. Um, the Play can configure uh, the input signals individually for each channel. Uh, the Play also supports multi format playback. Uh, technically, it means that uh, replay supports all major input uh, and output um, audio video signal formats as well as uh, the most common media file formats. Uh, replay also supports, uh, supports simultaneous and uh, independent operations with several channels, um, channels of insertion or uh, channels of broadcasting. And of course, uh, the multi channel playback, uh, playback is also supported. Replay is um, architecture uh, built on client-server technology uh, and all server functions uh, are managed through the client application. Therefore, uh, we can remotely make playlists and schedules uh, through uh, the integrated replay channel manager, manager editor. 
Uh, also, in the standard uh, replay package, we have a built-in remote scan editor for uh, graphic uh, environment and uh, for channel design. This is uh, replay scan editor. Uh, and also, uh, if you need the high quality record of your signal uh, for using in post-production, for example, we have the specified software product uh, in the same package of replay. Uh, this is direct software product uh, for multi-channel recording uh, of video signals in television quality. Uh, so, uh, as we can see, replay is very functional and uh, at the same time it's very flexible in configuration. And uh, it has a very logical, very nice and user-friendly inter interface. And uh, I will show you this interface a little bit later. Uh, so now, um, we have uh, the basic understanding of the play, and uh, we know its possibilities. Uh, so uh, let's move on to something really interesting and new. Uh, here I'm talking about uh, the new features, um, which make our product more powerful, uh, more flexible, and uh, even cooler than before. Uh, so, I mean, uh, let's talk about the new features of Fitplay. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, I will talk about the following things. Uh, first, automated import of playlists and schedule files. Um, then, uh, we will talk about broadcast redundancy in one plus one mode. Uh, then, about um, automatic import of content uh, from external storage systems. And finally, we will talk about uh, work with external graphic, uh, graphics broadcasting system. Okay, let's start in following order. Um, we play auto import of schedules, automated import uh, of schedules and playlist files. First, look at the scheme. Mm -hmm. This is our new feature uh, that allows we play to interact with external traffic systems. Uh, for example, I may mention uh, the traffic systems of uh, our long-time business partners, Proys uh, or Oplan. Um, what we can see in the scheme. First, uh, we configure the channel um, in the Replay Configurator program. And uh, here we must create a specific folder. Uh, you can see this folder in the center of the scheme. Uh, everyday schedules from the external traffic systems um, will be loaded into this folder. Uh, schedules can be loaded there automatically from traffic systems, as I said before, or you can create the schedules in this folder manually. Um, a little bit later, uh, I will show you how to do this and um, I will show you the points uh, you need to consider when um, you create the schedules manually. Uh, so let's go next. Uh, after setting up the folder, uh, the schedules from this folder uh, are automatically loaded uh, into the current broadcast schedule. Um, I think it's pretty clear and uh, pretty simple. Uh, what are the advantages of uh, such solution? This new feature uh, automates the process of loading schedules. And um, this feature uh, reduces the possibility of operator's error. Um, it increases the human factor to almost zero. And uh, of course, it saves us uh, the time for pre-air preparation. So let's move on to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Um, here we can see a, scre uh, a screenshot of the replay uh, configurator interface, uh, as I promised before. Uh, very, very nice interface. Um, what settings we can see here? First, uh, the ability to use this functionality itself. Uh, this is a mark to enable auto import schedule. When we check this box, we allow the channel to interact with external traffic systems. Uh, next is um, removing schedule after import. Uh, that is, we can delete the schedule from the folder. If we need, we may do it after uh, importing into the current broadcast schedule of the channel. Next uh, is the setting enable auto download content. Uh, this setting refers to the automatic downloading of content from external storages. Um, I will tell you uh, about this a little bit later. For now, uh, let's just remember that this setting uh, is also exists and uh, it is located here. Then uh, we can choose the type of schedule files which we will use uh, during importing. By default, uh, the format is Excel or XML format, uh, but you can also use CSV or XLS files. Um, in this case, the files uh, have to be prepared according to our recommendations. Um, these recommendations you can uh, find uh, on our technical support site. Um, when you select uh, the CSV or uh, XLS files in this setting, uh, these files uh, will be 
convert it to XML and uh, the schedule will be read and imported correctly. What we see next? Um, this is the setting for check uh, next n days. Here you may specify uh, how many days before the broadcast the schedule will be imported. Uh, it will be imported from the upload folder into the current broadcast schedule. By, the, uh, by default, it is set on three days, uh, but uh, this parameter can be changed, and uh, you may assign as many days as you need. Um, next. Uh, the next setting uh, skipped uh, items for n minutes. Mm -hmm. This setting uh, is used in, in emergency cases. Uh, for example, uh, when we need urgently uh, replace position uh, in the schedule or to replace the whole entire schedule. Here we can set uh, how much time uh, from the current position, playing position in the schedule, the old content will be played. Uh, this function will provide um, some time for operator uh, to adjust the schedule. Um, it, help, it helps us to avoid uh, defects or some kind of disruption or any kind of sharp transitions on the air. Uh, this is the way to protect the viewer from uh, sharp changes of viewed content. This parameter uh, can also be configured and uh, you can specify uh, the required amount of time in minutes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have two more settings below. Um, this one contains uh, the path to the folders. In first line, uh, we can see the configuration of the outloaded uh, outload folder. Sorry uh, for automatic import of schedules uh, that I have mentioned earlier. Here we may choose uh, where the traffic system will uh, upload our daily schedules. And the last one uh, contains the replacement path. It is necessary if the traffic system um, uploads uh, the schedule with incorrect path, and uh, this path has to be replaced. All files with incorrect path will be searched in this folder. Um, so that's all about uh, the interface of the play mm -hmm. The next step, slide. Um, now we can see how uh, this setting, our afterload folder, looks like in channel manager program. Here we can see uh, the resource panel. Uh, it is located on upper left corner uh, in the channel manager program. And uh, this uh, panel contains um, all types of uh, live inputs, uh, scenes, uh, logo types, um, any types of uh, network sources, and so on. Uh, and in the channel programming section, in the bottom of uh, the page, you can see um, we see the schedule upload folder in which uh, our schedules will be located. Um, let me remind you that uh, schedules can be automatically exported into this folder by the traffic system, uh, as I said before, or uh, you can add uh, a file to this folder manually. Um, in this case, um, there is one important point. Um, the file must have a specific name. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, it has to be written in, um, in the name format year, month, day, exactly in this order. For example, um, 2020 12xml uh, And also, uh, in this part of my presentation, I would like to talk about other, um, our, um, other, our new functions of, of working with schedules and playlists. Um, in our new release, um, the mechanism of working with playlists and schedules has been uh, strongly improved. Mm. Now we have the opportunity uh, to rename playlists, to copy them and uh, to move them between the folders. Um, and all uh, the sections uh, you can do right in the channel manager program, uh, as we do it in the standard file system. And uh, also all the changes uh, we make will be also applied uh, in the corresponding folder of the hard disk. Mm, I think let's remember how uh, the system was made earlier. Previously, you could only create uh, a new empty playlist in the folder, then open it, uh, create a new schedule, or copy-paste something in it. Um, and now you can copy playlists and schedules. You can rename them and move them between folders, as you like and as you need. Um, this feature reduces the number of operations, and uh, it makes the operating with the program more comfortable. Um, another important new feature is uh, working with entire playlists. In general, this is similar to, uh, to work with prepared media assets uh, combined into um, some kind of virtual set. 
The main idea is um, that you can uh, make playlists in advance in uh, any previous time, and uh, you can add any design to them, uh, I mean titles, logotypes, uh, rolling crows, any kind of external events and so on. And then uh, you add the whole playlist to the proper uh, place in the schedule with a simple drag and drop. So let's conclude. Uh, we have three new options. At first, uh, we can rename playlists, uh, can, we can copy them and move them between the folders as in a standard file system, uh, right inside the channel manager program. Um, and uh, this feature reduces the number of operations and uh, it makes our life more comfortable. Um, at second, you can work with entire playlists. Uh, you can add them to the schedule as prepared media assets uh, with all of the design, uh, all of uh, external events with a simple drag and drop. And third, uh, the main option is automatic loading of schedules. Um, this is the integration with external traffic systems. Um, when the traffic system uploads the daily schedule into a pre-configured folder. Um, and so uh, then the schedule from this folder is loaded uh, into the main broadcast schedule. We can make it, uh, make it for the specified number of days. So that's all uh, about working with schedules and playlists. Uh, and uh, now let's move on to our next uh, new feature, replay broadcast reservation or redundancy in one plus one mode. So uh, let's look at the scheme again. Mm -hmm. and one second. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Um, the functionality of uh, a reservation in one plus one mode um, is based on the independent synchronous work of two broadcast channels. Uh, these channels are controlled from one uh, client workstation. This is exactly what is shown on the slide. Um, this uh, way of reservation includes two servers, A and B. Primarily, they are only synchronized by the time parameter uh, using network time protocol or uh, NTP server. You can uh, see it in the left part of the slide. And then uh, when we set up the redundancy, the servers will synchronize their schedules. Um, the only thing that uh, connect these two independent servers are, uh, is a setting. Um, that shows to the client application that uh, these two servers are working in pair. Um, yes, uh, we can see the client application uh, on the right side of the slide. For the client application, uh, the redundant servers are displayed as uh, the one single channel. Mm -hmm. But the broadcast is being made of, uh, from two servers in every moment of time. Uh, when the servers are connected uh, in such redundancy, uh, the client application works with both servers at the same time. It is important. And um, now we can look at the slide and see uh, how the interface looks uh, when it's working in redundancy mode. Uh, here I mean two new green buttons, A and B. Uh, you can see them on the screenshot. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our redundancy interface. All comments from the operator uh, are sent immediately to both servers. And uh, the synchronization point is a client application that uh, sends comments to both servers simultaneously. All schedules and uh, all files must be uh, uploaded to both servers. And uh, all the paths, files, uh, all the schedules uh, must be identical, of course. What advantages of uh, such solution do we have? Um, the main is uh, that all changes are applied immediately on both servers. The redundancy mode has a um, built-in mechanism for monitoring server synchronization uh, with three gradations. Um, here I mean the color code. This is a color code. Uh, first uh, is a green light of A and B buttons. Um, it means that everything is okay, uh, that both servers are um, running synchronously and uh, the schedules are fine. Everything is okay. Orange code, uh, both buttons are orange. Uh, what does it mean? The schedule synchronization is damaged um, or servers are out of synchronization uh, beyond five frames. Uh, this can, can be easy, uh, easily verified by switching the schedules uh, between the servers. And uh, we will immediately see by the, by the playback timer uh, in the upper left corner of uh, the application that schedules are not synchronized. In this case, uh, we can forcibly synchronize these schedules 
And uh, to do this, uh, we have to select um, a server uh, and say to synchronize from A to B or backwards from uh, B to A, depending on which server currently leads. Um, to synchronize uh, the schedules for forcibly, we need to go to the tab uh, redundancy, find uh, the, the only uh, drop down tab synchronize and tap it. Uh, by this way, our schedules will be synchronized manually. And uh, the last uh, variation of color code is red. Um, you will see this indication in case when uh, one of the broadcast servers is unavailable. Uh, so uh, let me remind uh, me this fact once again. If uh, necessary, we have the possibility of manual synchronization of uh, redundant servers. It is important, really. Mm, one more interesting new feature is uh, that when you switch uh, the buttons of redundant servers from A to B or backwards, uh, the channel previews are also switching. Uh, thus, we have uh, the visual control of two channels, mm -hmm. or, or the channel previews, to be exact. And uh, the final important point uh, is um, that we have the possibility to view the schedules of each channel individually. For example, if there is not enough content on one of the servers, uh, it will be visible while switching. Um, the missing content will be highlighted in red uh, in the schedule. Um, an important advantage of uh, this solution is that uh, when a single uh, signal disappears from one of the servers, in this one plus one redundancy mode, broadcasting doesn't stop. Um, what is the difference between uh, our solution and the standard way of reservation? Uh, standard solution uses the primary and backup server model. All the changes are first uh, made on the main server and then they uh, applied uh, to the backup server. Uh, they are duplicated, they are due to automation. Um, so uh, the mechanism of, um, of reservation listens what is uh, happening on the main server and then duplicates the, these changes to itself. Um, it requires some time. Um, this time uh, it may be small, uh, even one or two seconds, but uh, this time time delay exists. And uh, if we have some failure uh, in the moment of duplication, if uh, at that moment something happened uh, with the, the main server, uh, so the backup server receive, uh, receives wrong schedule. It doesn't uh, receive all the changes or doesn't receive them at all. Our scheme of redundancy uh, um, has no such drawback. Um, the servers are really uh, completely dependent from each other and uh, also works independently. Mm, what does it mean? At any time, uh, we can overload the main or the backup server. Uh, we can update the system uh, or um, carry out maintenance work. We can literally turn it off and take it away. Uh, and even in this case, uh, the viewer will see no defects. So uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, what we can see here, um, the next two slides to be exact. Um, this is exactly the redundancy configuration interface. Uh, it is important to understand that a uh, redundancy configuration is performed uh, on both servers at, this, uh, at the same time. Um, and the process itself is quite simple. Uh, we go into the redundancy settings and set a mark. Uh, then we select the server, uh, which contains the reserve channel. Mm. We select it uh, through the search option. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we select the channel which will be reserved. Uh, it is because um, the server can uh, run multiple channels uh, at once, and here we choose the right one. And uh, then we tap OK. Uh, that is how we confirm uh, our changes. And uh, the same action uh, must be made on the partner channel of the second, uh, second server. Here you can see redundancy setting for channels. Uh, for server one, uh, we select server two. Uh, thereafter, uh, for server two, we select server one. Uh, here, uh, in the second server, we also save the changes, uh, restart the service, and our redundancy mode starts to work. And uh, the client application begins to work with two channels, as with one. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. We need your copy. Um, this is our next new feature, um, our new service. 
Vimedia Kotlin. Um, it is automatic downloading of media content uh, to servers from external storage sources. What does it mean? Um, all of the above is very important, actually, uh, and uh, very good. Uh, the making of schedules uh, and uh, redundancy and so on. But look, uh, if we don't have content, everything looks a little more complicated. Uh, when the schedule was imported, you can see the schedule uh, at the left side of the slide. Uh, we need to download the content. Now, for this goal, um, we have added the possibility to automatically copy of content from external sources. Uh, and this is uh, media storage service, vMedia code. Um, this is the standalone application. It's important, yes. Uh -huh. uh, vMedia copy allows uh, the channel to request and uh, automatically receive content from the copy service. And uh, there is also the possibility to quickly play media files from external systems, uh, say in case of any emergency or uh, unexpected situations. Um, I will talk about this a little bit later. Uh, now, to begin, I will uh, tell you the basic uh, principle of work and uh, mm -hmm. I will explain what is uh, shown on the screen. Uh, first, we create an on-air schedule for the channel. For example, we can automatically load the schedules from the traffic system to the Outload folder, as I said earlier. And uh, then uh, the broadcast channel checks our schedule and finds the missing content. Uh, I mean the content that is absent at the server in the moment. Um, then, after then, uh, the broadcast channel forms the request to the media copy server. This content, uh, sorry, this uh, request um, contains the list of files to be downloaded. And uh, then by this request, the media copy uh, server generates its own copy list. Uh, this list uh, is being generated with chronological priority. I mean that the file uh, which is the closest to the actual schedule line um, or plain position, plain line in uh, the schedule will be copied first. And then uh, the media copy service copies the content uh, to a specific folder of the broadcast server. What are the advantages of such technology? Uh, why, why is it so necessary and so useful? Firstly, it reduces pre-air preparation time for the broadcast operator. Everything happens automatically. Then, um, it eliminates a human error in process of copying. Um, Vmedia server, uh, Vmedia copy um, copies only required content to the broadcast server. And uh, now you don't need to store all the content on the broadcast server. Um, so you can reduce uh, the amount of rates on the server, why not? Uh, or you may use faster SSD drives. Um, so this decision saves our money uh, and improves the performance at the same time. Then, um, now it is enough to store the five days content uh, on the broadcast server. The rest of our content may be stored uh, at any external storages and uh, we can download this data in any moment of time. Another good uh, option of media copy is automatic uh, removal of content. I mean, um, removing of content which is uh, not required uh, for, uh, for us right now, in the moment. We can automatically remove it from the broadcast server. How we can do it? Mm, sorry, one second. Mm, how we can remove uh, the content from the broadcast server. Mm. First, uh, the automation system looks at the schedule, looks at the schedule. Uh, for example, three days uh, at the past schedule and the uh, schedule for the next three days. In regular situation, um, the system finds uh, content on server, which is uh, not used um, during this period of time. Uh, when Vmedia copy locate, uh, locates such content, it removes this content from the server and uh, free enough space. It is pretty effective, but uh, a little bit brutal <laughs> instrument. We can make it so, uh, can make it so. Uh, so uh, there is another uh, alternative variation of uh, automatic deletion, uh, more gentle. We can delete files only after reaching uh, of a defined amount of used disk space. For example, 75% of this parameter can be changed. In this case, 
Um, if the video storage uh, of the broadcast server is more than 75% uh, full, the server uh, starts searching uh, of files that can be deleted. Uh, the mechanism of deletion is, ba is based on the priority, um, two kinds uh, of priority. First, the file size, and the second is uh, the time of usage, uh, I mean the oldest year. Uh, so it uh, protects files that are used uh, frequently. Let's go next. And uh, now it's time to speak about uh, the next important feature uh, of media copy, this is uh, media playback over a network. Um, I think uh, let's look more closely to the real situation. We all know that uh, the broadcast of any TV channel is a real-time process. Um, and changes in the schedule are periodically required. And uh, sometimes uh, there are replacement with a uh, um, late notice. And in this case, uh, we can solve the problem using uh, the media copy service. We have three options uh, for such situation. Or, uh, in other words, uh, we have three types of uh, emergency content delivery to a broadcast server. Um, in this case, I think it is easier to explain uh, the situation using an example from a real life. So uh, let's imagine the real channel and uh, let's look at the, some strange situation. For example, we have uh, a content provider uh, that for some reason uh, has not managed to provide us uh, the desired movie or some kind of video. Also, uh, this content was in our today's schedule late in the evening. Mm -hmm. And the chance to get content is very small. That is, uh, today I do not have time to provide the content, but the day uh, after tomorrow. Here we have such a careless content provider. What we may do in this situation? Uh, since the, um, this place uh, in the schedule remains empty for us, uh, instead of this content, we can show another one. Uh, say, it, um, a content that uh, we plan to show, for example, uh, two days later. We have this, uh, this file, uh, file for replacement uh, in the schedule, and uh, we also have it in the copy list of Vimedia copy service. In this case, uh, we can set the copy priority for this file, or uh, in other words, uh, in the copy list of Vimedia copy, we can move this file up, or uh, manually change it, uh, its priority. Uh, and uh, so this file will be copied first, uh, despite uh, where in the schedule or um, in what position in the copy list it was before. Uh, it will be downloaded first. Mm, okay. Um, then, after uh, this extremely copying situation, um, we inform our boss that everything is bad and the schedule is at risk. Uh, the boss uh, calls the content provider and convinces him to turn in uh, the content today. Uh, and uh, after talking with our boss, uh, our beloved provider moves forward and tells us, uh, hey, the good news, I will bring content, but closer to dinner. And he brings it uh, in a couple of hours before the broadcast. In this case, uh, we give this content, a uh, movie for example, the highest priority for emergency coping. And, uh, in this case, we uh, will download this only file from an external storage. All other downloads are paused during uh, the downloading of this file. And in fact, uh, all network resources will be thrown uh, to emergency copying of this long awaited file uh, with all possible speed. Okay, uh, then uh, when the downloading is finished, uh, the rest of the files uh, from this copy list will continue to download normally. Um, this mode is um, also useful, for example, um, in the situations when uh, the scenario for a news program was prepared uh, in a very short time before the broadcast, for example, why not? And uh, the last situation is uh, playback over the network. Um, there is also situations when uh, our beloved provider provides the content right before the broadcast. He apologized for missing all the deadlines, uh, but brought the content, our content. Uh, 
And in this case, we understand that we won't be able uh, to copy this file uh, to the server, even with emergency copy. Uh, so we need to play it on the air. In this case, uh, the replay server sends a request um, to play uh, this file over the network. And the media copy via its protocol provides uh, direct access to the missing file for playback from a remote array. It means that uh, the file opens on the broadcast server, uh, but is played from the media copy server. And uh, as a result, uh, the broadcast was saved and uh, our beloved viewer saw a new series of his favorite soap opera. Everything is fine. Okay, um, let's go next. Um, let's talk about working with multiple channels. Um, architecture, the media copy can uh, can be installed on the same machine as the broadcast server. Nothing prevents you from installing it, uh, connecting network folders, <laughs> working with them physically on the same machine. Uh, this is only permitted if we have um, only one broadcast channel. But actually, we don't recommend uh, doing this uh, because the media copy requires uh, certain resources. If there are several channels in the broadcasting system, as you uh, can see in the scheme, the media copy must be installed at a separate machine. It is important. Uh, when working with multiple channels, uh, the media copy generates file lists and provides streams uh, for each channel separately. Uh, for each channel, we get uh, only the required content uh, and we copy it in, in accordance to the schedule, uh, to the schedules from Every, uh, every single channel, every single uh, server. Um, and uh, every uh, copy list or schedule um, has the possibility uh, to set priorities and copies in emergency. If you remember the previous slide, uh, all these features can be used for several servers simultaneously. Um, a couple of words about uh, storages um, that, that's supported by uh, the media copy. What types of storages? Uh, are supported. Uh, first is uh, direct uh, attached storages. Um, this is directly connected to the server uh, hard drives or storages. Uh, then network attached storages, um, standard network drives. Uh, network file systems, um, external network drives. <laughs> and uh, storage area network, uh, this is a solution for connecting um, of storage devices uh, to servers. I mean, disk storages or uh, tape libraries or optical drives or something. Um, <laughs> this all is already supported. Um, work with clouds uh, will be implemented uh, by VC till September. This is the same thing, uh, but only with cloud storages. So let's conclude. Uh, what we may copy, um, we need a copy, can do. I'm sorry. <laughs> First, it uh, copy content by uh, the request of the broadcast channel. Uh, then it forms a copy list uh, with the possibility to sort or uh, to copy content in emergency. Uh, it provides access to media files uh, on external storage systems for, uh, for playback uh, on air. And uh, it can work with multiple broadcast servers simultaneously. What a good media. Service. Okay, um, and uh, now the last uh, thing for today um, that we will talk about uh, is the work with external systems for graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, for TV channels that uh, requires advanced graphic design functionality, um, we provide the opportunity to work with broadcast uh, graphic systems via field plus k. Okay. Um, now, you get, uh, now you can add a leaf source uh, in the form of um, field plus k signal to the play graphics scenes. Um, supported sources are SDI, one second, here. Uh, supported sources are SDI and NDI. Uh, SDI is uh, a classic titration systems and um, NDI can be obtained uh, from VizRT or um, from the most popular among our customer, uh, customers, vMix system. Uh, what is the most important uh, functionality and uh, the main advantage 
of this solution. First, uh, let's see how it was made before. Uh, let's uh, look at the slide. Uh, here you can see the old scheme. Uh, in classic solution, uh, in classical solution, uh, the signal from the broadcast server is going to the input of an external graphic system. And uh, exactly this uh, graphic system imposes uh, a graphic design signal, and uh, then um, the signal goes on there. Why it is bad? Um, in this decision, we have an additional point of failure. I mean the external graphic system. Uh, and how we solve this problem? And what is happening in our solution now? Uh, the main blocks in our scheme are inverted. Um, what does it mean? Uh, some kind uh, of channel with transparency comes uh, to us from the outside, uh, from external graphic systems. Um, and we insert uh, the signal to the broadcast server and uh, give the complete picture with our laid graphic, uh, graphics to the output. If for some reason the external graphic system falls off, uh, the one problem we have is the disappearance of the channel graphic. Um, in other words, the broadcast signal uh, continues without graphic design. Uh, there is the difference uh, with the previous solution. Let's look again. In the same situation, uh, all the broadcast will be ruined. And with our decision, the broadcast signal uh, will not fall off, and uh, thus we remove this extra point of failure. I think it's very convenient and uh, very functional. And also, uh, one important point, uh, when we make a redundancy decision, we don't need to duplicate uh, the graphic, des uh, graphic design systems. Uh, as you can see, uh, here is one external graphic systems, system, two servers, and uh, two um, output uh, signals. Um, it is pretty important and uh, helps us to save some money. <laughs> um, okay, uh, for today, this is all I wanted to say about uh, the new features and capabilities of the play and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to write them to the chat and uh, of course uh, we will be glad to see you uh, at the second series of our uh, webinar tomorrow and thank you all for your attention um, now i give a word to my colleagues maxim viremiev the play uh, product owner and uh, project manager and victor bershansky my technical assistant and engineer and now we will answer to the questions Hello, colleagues. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, Svetlana, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, that yes, was, I can hear. My microphone was, was turned off. Okay. So we have a few questions, mostly from Mr. Daronin. And he is asking uh, if Mm, our system is integrated with Arvata uh, Bertelsmann traffic system. Currently, no. Uh, currently, uh, our system is integrated only with Provis and uh, Aplan. <clears throat> However, uh, uh, it, it might be integrated with other external systems. So this is subject to negotiation and part of the contract if any so uh, you're welcome to uh, request uh, and the company will definitely uh, review all possible options okay uh, another question is is uh, ntp is enough for synchronization of servers play out and playlists uh, are we using i are we planning to use uh, rtr um, ntp is needed for synchronization of the broadcast the playlists are being synchronized by the process of synchronization itself between servers so uh, it's a little bit two different processes it's not one process so synchronization of play out and synchronization of playlists uh, they are handled differently but yes both of them are synchronized uh, if the recording of the webinars will be available yes the, the answer is yes it will be available on the YouTube. And most likely you will receive, um, afterwards you will receive links to those recordings. And 
Uh, what else? Uh, uh, what else? Mm, I believe that's all. Uh, I, I I don't remember if I answered the question. If we are planning to use RTR, yes, yes, RTR. Uh, we are planning to use RTR, yes. Uh, or oh, PTP, sorry, it's PTP. Uh, we are using we are PTP, yes. Uh, uh, what else? I believe that's all. No more questions. Yes, I, I also think that's that's all we have now. Uh, no questions anymore. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Thank you your colleagues. Uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, so, so oh, we that's all for today. We have uh, some praises from Carlos and Mr. Tarodin. Thank you, господин Карлос и господин Тарон. Uh, we have some comment, I don't know if it's comment or question, I don't know how, how, to, interpret, how to interpret this. The color distinction in Vplay 3. Uh, I think it's about the color code of um, green, orange, no, red buttons. I, I don't think Maybe. so. Uh, Mr. No. Carlos, could you please be? Ah, yes, color code in the playlist. Uh, so, what, what what about the color code? Uh, mm. If uh, something is wrong with uh, the files, but uh, they can be played, uh, the files uh, will be highlighted by orange. Uh, and uh, if um, the files are not exist on the server, uh, or it can be played, can't be played at all, uh, they will uh, will be highlighted. Okay. Right. If it's orange, Svetlana, if it's orange, what's the explanation? If the color is orange. Um, for example, the wrong resolution of file or um, wrong uh, um, fr frame rate. Ah, so okay. Example. So there is something wrong with the with the technical with the technical no, spec. Yes, technical spec of the file. Uh, okay, yes. it's not up to date. Okay, so you know, the, the the orange. Uh, here was orange. And uh, red uh, code means that um, so, there is yes, no so file. Green, the green is, is file. Uh, it's uh, self-explicable. Green is uh, everything is okay with the file. Orange, there is something technical problem uh, with that. We have no red green. File. Uh, we, we have had no green uh, color code in playlist uh, at all. If uh, everything is okay, uh, the color of uh, playlist will be gray or uh, some kind of light blue. Uh, now I show you. I I can show you. One second, please. Uh, here is the example in the um, bottom left uh, corner. You can see uh, this schedule is fine, is okay, and uh, it is gray color. Um, two color lines. Um, green line um, means uh, it is the now playing position, um, active uh, line in the schedule. Uh, and the orange line, uh, this is uh, the file uh, that will be played next. Next, next in line, okay. Uh, yes. Next in line, yes. Uh, um, Carlos is asking if we color coding the categories. I, 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 I don't know. Tell me yes or no, Mr. Carlos. Please tell me yes or no. Uh, you are asking if uh, we can assign color codes to different categories of, of the files? Okay. Uh, so, can we assign? I, I believe the answer is yes. But, okay, so, Svetlana, can we mm. assign? No? No, no, no. We, we have it no used to such options. It used to no. be. It used to be. Yeah. Uh, we, we can insert uh, the Commercials in um, 
in the same kind of block it and it will uh, no, be no, it's not about highlighted when by you add the files uh, when you when you add the files to the storage okay, to the media storage you in the play you're adding files um, and uh, you have different categories let's say you have commercials you have music you have videos new, uh, movies and so on before in the replay for version you were able to separate them by colors let's say you have folder uh, folder no, painted no, in red and no, put in this no. folder only commercials or you could have folder painted in purple let's say and put in this movies so okay i, I understand the question uh no uh, now we uh, haven't such option. okay carlos this option. I, I i hope i hope you hear us uh, no no the, the answer is no and um, it's not planned it's not even in any in plans to introduce this option so sorry to say that but uh, all uh, the commercials you can add uh, to uh, blocks uh, in the schedule and uh, they will be highlighted in blue, uh, as you can see the screenshot. Uh, this is um, some some kind of um, comfortable work with schedule. Mm. Yes, I understand. The block is a pretty comfortable instrument. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, Carlos. Yes, I, I understand. I, I, I understand uh, your convenience. Yes. Uh, um, because uh, in version four, yes, it was visually, visually it was very convenient. Uh, frankly, I don't know why developers decided, but maybe that it's uh, it's become a victim of this pretty complicated system of transfer of, of the files. So probably most likely it's sort of like uh, it's it's a payoff. You know, they sacrificed with something. Uh, uh, also, we have a comment from Carlos that he is very happy that NGI is integrated for graphics. Yes, it was, yes, it was, it was quite an effort. It was quite an effort, Carlos, yes. It was quite an effort to, to accomplish it, yes. So, uh, we are glad you are recognizing that. Okay. Next, gentlemen and ladies. Okay, Svetlana, looks like there is no more questions, technical questions, so we can yes, wrap it yes, up. Sir. We can wrap it up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I agree. Okay, so give your final, give your final word. So? Thank you all for your attention, for your questions, and... Uh, we will be glad to see all of you tomorrow. Uh, it will be interesting, uh, I promise. Uh, so, goodbye. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you for being with us.